So this problem we're going to look at now has got a little extra bit, which is this part B part. And you've probably got an idea about this already uh, because of some of the things that we mentioned earlier on. So um, we're going to find the Maclaurin series for ln of 1 plus x, and then we're going to do some other estimates in just a second. Okay? So let's start off. I don't want to use my red pen or my blue for part A. f of x is ln of 1 plus x. So this differentiation is going to be a little bit harder. What does ln of 1 plus x differentiate to? 1 over, 2. 1 over 1 plus x, which I'm obviously going to rewrite as 1 plus x to the minus 1. And now I'm going to do the second derivative of this using the chain rule. What would the second derivative be? Minus. minus to the minus 2. So I pulled the power down. Didn't even really have to do anything with the chain rule because the derivative of 1 plus x is 1. And then my next one is going to be 2. Go to positive 2 because you've got a negative times a negative 2. 1 plus x to the minus 3. Now I'm going to do the fourth derivative as well. Minus 6. 1 plus x to the minus 4. I am going to do the fifth derivative as well. It would be 24. 1 plus x to the minus 5. Now it's probably worth um, noting that you need to know your factorials now. You need to be able to recognize them. So we should know that 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6, 4 factorial is 24. haven't even put an equal sign in there. And 5 factorial is 120. So it may be useful in a second if we want to include some of these things with factorials as well. Okay. So what I'm also going to do now is I'm going to do all of my zeros. So f of 0 is ln of 1, which is ln of 1? 0. It's saying the power of e that gives you 1 is 0. e to the power of 0 is 1. And now we're going to substitute in 0 into this. It's 1. Because you just have 1 over 1. And now we've got minus 1 over 1 squared. So it's just going to be minus 1. What's this one? 2. This one is minus 6. So basically, this 1 plus x to the power of something is obviously uh, just always going to be 1. Or it's always going to be over 1. And so the fifth derivative is 24. Now, it might be worth thinking of this thing as 2 factorial this thing as minus 3 factorial, and this thing as 4 factorial as well, because that might help us with this next stage that we've got here. I'm not going to squeeze it in at the top. Now we're going to say f of x, which is ln of 1 plus x, is going to be the first one, which is 0, so I'm not going to write that, plus 1x minus x squared over 2 factorial plus 2 factorial x cubed over 3 factorial. And then the next one is going to be minus 3 factorial x to the 4 over 4 factorial, plus the next one will be 4 factorial x to the 5 over 5 factorial. So what do we think these factorially things are going to do when they cancel out? What do we think, for example, 3 factorial divided by 4 factorial is? <laughs> 1 over 4. That's 3 times 2 times 1. That's 4 times 3 times 2. So all of this tail bit here 
gets cancelled and you just get left with 1 over 4. So just as a quick reminder, these bits are the bits that are in the formula. You've got like your x squared over 2 factorial, your x cubed over 3 factorial, your x4 over 4 factorial. And then the coefficients are the ones that we have here of 0, 1, minus 1, 2 factorial, minus 3 factorial, plus 4 factorial. The next one would actually have been a minus. Not that it really matters. It, the next one would be minus 5 factorial x to the 6 over... 6 factorial. And the x to the 6 over the 6 factorial is the standard thing that just comes up in every single formula. So we can now simplify this, and when we simplify it, we get x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the power of 4 over 4 plus x to the power of 5 over 5 minus x to the power of 6 over 6 plus, etc. We didn't need to do as many terms as that, but seeing as we're at the start of this topic, it's worth thinking of what that would look like. And what would the rth term look like, do we think? Minus 1 to the r. Next to the r over r. Well, now we just need to check if this is correct, because I agree with x to the r over r. So x to the r over r is obviously true because we've got the 5 and the 5 matching, the 4 and the 4 matching. You just need to say to yourself, when it's an even number, what would it be? Minus 1 to the power of an even number would be positive. But I don't want it to be positive. I want it to be negative. So how do I change this power here? r plus 1 or r minus 1? And then we're going to compare that to the formula book. They've got it as a plus 1? So on the formula page, this is what we've just done here. If they did it with a plus one, it could have been with a minus one. It doesn't make a difference. And we're going to do, again, the same process with Desmos. So the black line is ln of 1 plus x. It's like the ln graph, but it's shifted. I'm just going to show you what happens when we increase a. The bottom one's great, but it looks, what's happening on the right-hand side here? It's crazy, isn't it? Like, however big I'm making A, I could do A up to a huge value. Let's change A up to, like, 100 or 1,000. No matter how big I make A, it's struggling because it's such a high number. I shouldn't have made the computer try and do this because it's having a freak out. Let's just change it. Let's just change it to 100 instead of 1,000. You can see that after a while, the Desmos is, is having a meltdown. It's just not, it's not getting good above where x is 1. It is not accurate after that bit that we've got there. So it doesn't work for all of the values. Yeah, why is it not working when x becomes a bigger number? Let's have a look at this for a second. What is going to happen if x is a large number here? What's going to happen to it? The, yeah, the, the numerators are going to get huge really quickly. If you go to like 1.1, if you do 1.1 to the power of 100, which is what we were just trying to do, it becomes a big number, and it doesn't fit the ln graph, because the ln graph has got this lovely smooth curve here. But as soon as you do, for this one, we've got uh, 1.1. Let's do it all the way up to 100 or 99. When it's 1.1 to the power of 99, it is already going to be sort of jumping up really, really, really high up. It's going to go away from the ln graph. And the ln graph actually has an asymptote at minus 1 as well. So it's only going to work for certain values. So when you go back to the formula book, it says this that x can only be used for this particular range of things that we've got here. It's only going to work when x is greater than minus 1. Obviously, we can't put in y minus 1 anyway, because you would then have the ln of 0. And it's only good up to and including 1. And you can see that here. It's good at 1. After that, it's terrible. So we're actually going to finish this question off, and we're going to do part b now. Part B says, using only the first three terms, find estimates for ln of 1.05, 1.25, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5,
and 1.8. Now we're only using the first three estimates. So if I go back to here and I put in A as three, this is what the graph looks like for A is three. And so you can see for A equals three, we're only using the first three terms in this particular one. When we use the first three terms, it's pretty good when it's close to zero, but when it gets further away from zero, it's not going to be a very good estimate. So let's actually just whack these things in the calculator. So for part B of the question, we're now going to say that ln of 1 plus x is approximately equal to. I have to use the approximately equal to sign now because I'm not using all of the terms. Here I was allowed to say it is equal to this because I was saying, uh, well, I, I should have been saying here dot, 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 as in it's going to keep going. It's infinite. Now I'm saying it's approximately equal to because I'm only using x x squared over 2 and x cubed over 3. It's not equal to that. It's approximately equal to that. It is equal to the full one, but it's not equal to those three that we've got there. And the first thing it wanted me to find was ln of 1.05. And so that is approximately going to be, x is clearly 0 0.05 here, so it's going to be 0 0.05. They, they will often ask you to just use 3 or 4, yeah. often. So it's the same, yes, just like binomial expansion, because it's, and when you do binomial expansion in pure maths in year two, it's the same. And so we've got 0 0.05 cubed over three. So ln of 1.05, we get 0 0.05 minus 0 0.05 squared divided by two plus 0 0.05 cubed divided by three. And I get it's approximately 0 0.048791. Did you have a question? Uh, you, um, oh, because this, this is uh, my formula for 1 plus x. So I want this to be 1 plus x. So I'm saying that the x to make this the same as this would have to be 0 0.05. Yeah? And so this is what, did it want it to a certain degree of accuracy? No, it just says find estimates for ln of 1.05. Now, if I actually find the proper value of ln of 1.05, it is really close. It's 0 0.048790. So the only thing that's different is that zero that I've got there. So it's really, really close for this one. The next one it wants me to find is ln of 1.25. So what am I going to substitute in for x now? 0 0.25. So it's going to be 0 0.25 minus 0 0.25 squared over 2. And what, do we th what can you predict about this answer? It's going to be less accurate, OK? Kicking everything around. Sorry about that. And this is approximately equal to 0 0.223958. But when I do ln of 1.25, So it's good up until, I mean, really, not even the 223. Because if you rounded this one to three decimal places, it would be 0 0.224. This one to three decimal places is 0 0.223. So it's really only good to two decimal places. This bit here is not so good. And now we know what's going to happen for this last one. When I do the ln of 1.8, I would have 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 squared over 2 plus 0 0.8 cubed over 3. And we're thinking this one's going to be even less of a good approximation. I get 0 0.6506666. And ln of 1.8 is actually 0 0.587786. So this is not a good approximation. because we use the first three terms only. So if we wanted better estimates, use more terms in the expansion, in the Maclaurin expansion. 
Would this be suitable to find out the Maclaurin expansion of ln of 2.1 if we use loads of terms? Would it ever be suitable? Good, because it's over 1. I would be substituting in x as bigger than 1. And if we look back at Desmos, even if we make a become a big value, if I wanted to substitute in 1 point something as x, it's a terrible approximation. It's outside the valid range that we've got. And so we can't use that one that we've got here. So I've said, what do you notice about the estimates and why is this happening? We notice that the estimates get less accurate. The reason this is happening is because they're getting further away from zero. They're moving further away from zero. And the further away we get from zero, the less accurate that these are, OK? Can I see what's on the next page? So the next page is just as really a summary of what we were just talking about, so that you've got some of it in your notes already. And I've said here, uh, I've got this ln of 1 plus x drawn in orange. We've seen the sort of uh, the representations of this sort of visually. This one, the red line is the fourth with four terms, seven terms, 11 terms, and 16 terms for those colors respectively. And you can see that after one, the branches are going drastically away from it. It's the same as what we've just seen on Desmos. So I've said here, we previously said that we can only guarantee the curve is the same, i.e. the expansion is valid, around x equals 0. For e to the x and cos x, we got lucky in that the curve turned out to be the same everywhere for all of x. But as per the animation above, which is the Desmos animation, we can see that if we get away from x equals 0, the curve actually gets worse with more terms in the expansion. So looking at the graph on the left, the range that it's valid for, it actually should have been minus 1x less than or equal to 1. I've realized that's not typed the same as what it is in the formula book. Well, so it can't be equal to minus 1. Yeah, because it's an asymptote. Because it would be an asymptote at that bit there. So that's not going to be good for it equal to minus 1. The formula book has it the same as that, right? So that's just kind of cool, right? That for some of the expansions, it's valid for all of them. Like, this is valid for all of them, this is valid for all of them, this is valid for all of them. But the ln graph, it's not valid for all of them. And similarly for the arc tan graph, which is just another, another sort of anomaly, it doesn't work for all of them. But the fact it works for sine x and cos x in that stitching kind of way is kind of amazing that it just works for all of them that we've got there. So the accuracy works again. The accuracy the more is... Accurate you want it, the, more terms. the more accurate you want it, the more terms you should be, and the closer to zero that it should be. If it's far away from zero that you want to do the approximation, you need to do the Taylor series, which is not in the stuff that we'll be doing, but it is in further pure one. And it's the same ideas as this, apart from the graph has just been translated to the left or the right to be able to sit in the right kind of place. So you're going to have a look at exercise 2C. 2C has got a combination of different things. It's mostly going to be finding the Maclaurin um, expansions. And it's also going to be doing some of the substitution and some of the estimates and stuff. And we're just going to work on that for the next, the last part of this lesson. OK?